All right, we're here with head coach Jack Owens after an 84-77 loss to Central Michigan. Uh, coach, your opening statement. <clears throat> well, I just thought the first half, you know, they came out and they set the tone uh, defensively, and we gave up too many transition points. And second half, we, we go on a run there. We cut it to four and, and actually get a crack at the rim and lose the basketball, miss a layup, and they go back down and execute on the next three possessions. I think that was the game from there. All right, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, how big of a factor was rebounding in, in this game? Uh, 42 to uh, 36 overall, their edge, but you just mentioned that point at 9.05 in the second half when they missed the free throw and got that Huge. one, which turned out to be really big. So how important was the rebounding? Huge. Uh, we have to do a better job um, in that area, offensively and defensively. Uh, the one thing Central Michigan does, they, they play a – uh, you know, man zone, zone man. And uh, we just have to do a better job offensively of probing. I think, you know, you're talking about the rebounding, and that's crucial. But I think it goes hand-to-hand -hand with our offense, with us selling for quick threes. Uh, because, you know, at times you are open. Uh, but you got to turn down the three uh, to get the ball inside or drive the basketball. And that's, that's when we cut their lead, when we, you know, make the guys drive the ball. I ask you the same thing I asked Nike. That team was picked to finish last in the West in the preseason polls. Um, I think they were a little underrated. Do you? Oh yeah, I don't think they took in consideration Larry Austin. Uh, he's a, I think he's a difference in that team uh, by far. Uh, but they, you know, Keno does a good job. They they have talented guys and Roundtree obviously played well. Montgomery is a guy who stepped in and. Um, what they have is some older guys, and those guys play very well. And, you know, there's a reason why they won 12 games. Uh, second half toward the end, you got it down to four points, and there was a, a possession uh, down four or six, something like that, where uh, I believe it was Ringo uh, drove the ball, shot got blocked, they go into the, to the other end, get a score, then they, they ran off a, a couple after that. That little stretch there seemed to uh, kind of, uh, you know, put it away almost, so to speak. Yeah, that was a big possession. It uh, wasn't a deciding factor, uh, you know, a combination of things or why we're in that position. But that was a big possession. Um, if he can score on that, it's probably a one possession game. Uh, but we had another opportunity to, I believe it was 68-64. Um, you know, we miss a shot or turn it over. Uh, two out of the three times, and we just have to do a better job of taking care of the basketball there, and uh, we will. And I have to do a better job putting them in position uh, to get a quality shot. Nike seemed to struggle against Evansville and then in the first half again today, but in the second half scored 14. What were you seeing from him, and did you see whatever it was start to maybe improve a little bit there in the second half? Well, he just made his mind up to drive the ball. I think when, when, when he mix in his three and his drives, um, um, he's tough to guard. I just with those, with, with Nike and Delonte, they went seven for 25. Uh, we need that to be seven for 16, seven for uh, 15 or something like that uh, with those guys' attempts. I, I know late in the game they try to cut the lead by taking those perimeter threes, but we have to do a better job. I want those guys shooting with confidence. It's just that's probably too many threes as a team to take um, against – that zone when we when we were driving the basketball, but Nike and Delonte are, are really good players, and they just continue to get better as well. We've talked many times, Coach, about how tough this conference is going to be this year. Four out of the first five games have been won by the road team. Northern Illinois, your next opponent, wins in overtime in Athens. What do you take from this game to get that home court advantage working in your way and take on the Huskies on Tuesday night? Right, we we just got to. Um, get better, continue to get better in a lot of areas. I know we talked about it, um, and you obviously need to protect home, and now we let one go, so we got to figure out how to go get one somewhere else. But our, our, our thing is one game at a time, and Northern Illinois is, is a good team. Obviously, they went in OU and got a win, and they're going to come here, um, you know, with, you know, expecting to do the same thing. So it's important for us, um, obviously, to learn from this, but we got to get our focus on Northern. But we got to learn from, from what just happened, and, and we will. Uh, we, we just got to watch more film and, and get these guys uh, to become a more disciplined team. Uh, Jalen Attaway had a, a big game on the boards, uh, played 37 minutes, but he only got four shots off from the field. Uh, was it anything with the matchup or 
uh, I would imagine you envision him taking a, a few more shots in that in yeah. most games. You know what? He's a guy that we encourage to shoot more. You know, he's the he's the one guy we want him to pick his spots. But against a zone, it's hard because um, when he gets in the high post, he's got to look to drive it in there. You know, he's got to look. We want him looking opposite and down. But when they match, that's his opportunity to drive. And those are the things he will continue to become more comfortable uh, in and in, in that role. And at the same time, when we're in our dribble drive, he needs to look to work downhill more or find places to post up in our motion or something like that. But, yeah, we would like for him to pick pick his spots a little bit more often. But he did a great job. He went and got 13 rebounds, eight points. But at the end of the day, we encourage him to, to be a little bit more aggressive. He needs to do that for us. How did you feel overall about a team – uh, defending a team like this that is so capable of running up some big numbers and, and getting up and down the floor? The concern was our transition D. We harped on it for, you know, four days, four or five days about how important it was to get the ball stopped. They averaged 88 points. You know, they scored over 100, you know, three, three times this year, I believe. But at the end of the day, we have to do a better job. In the second half, I thought, you know, when we went on that run, not only did we defend them, we kept them out of transition for the most part. Uh, but it was everyone. You know, I'm, I'm looking back trying to get guys in. They're already at the rim. And the thing we talked about is within the first five to six seconds, they're trying to push it right there to, uh, to score. Uh, but we'll watch film. We'll learn from this and um, clean up our transition day for sure. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you. All right. We're here with Nike Sabandi. We'll open up for questions. Okay, Nike, that team was picked to finish last in a preseason poll in their division. Would you could say that they might be a little bit underrated? Um, th yeah, they are, they're an underrated team. They got some good guard play, and uh, they play well together and, and, and very unselfish. So uh, credits to them. They, they're a good team. Uh, I know you've played other times that like other teams that like to get it up and down the floor, but this team seemed to thrive on it. And of course, we know they're scoring a, a lot of points every game. Uh, was there any differences you'd say between uh, this team and what you've uh, had to face so far as far as challenges, either individually or collectively? Um, I feel like we, we, we played a team like this before that uh, pushed pushed the pace very well and got the ball up the court very fast. So we prepared by getting two safeties back. But, um, you know, they was they they had a good good night tonight and, and, and beat us. So. You personally, you had six against Evansville and only three in the first half today. But then you scored 14 in the second half. Um, it's, it's, is there something physically wrong or where you just felt like you're in a slump? And did you feel like you might be coming out of it? In, during the second half? Uh, I'm just, you know, finding my rhythm and getting my rhythm back. Um, you know, personally, I just, just feel like I kind of don't have no rhythm, but that just comes with me continuing to get in the gym and just shoot late night like I usually do. So hopefully I'll keep, uh, continue to find my rhythm and just um, keep playing basketball. Did you say shooting late night? Yeah, yeah. What kind of things uh, – was the team focusing on and trying to stop a, a, a team like this coming in? What did you feel you had to do to, uh, you know, hold them down? Uh, our coach emphasized on their guard play. They have very good, you know, fast guards that's experienced and been here before. And um, so they definitely emphasized on the guard play and, and, and them scoring a lot of points. You know, they average around 80-something points, 89, 88 points. So, uh he definitely emphasized they're trying to get it up and score the basketball. So that's definitely our emphasis. Uh, he emphasized on that. And I say late night because, like, I like to get in the gym at night and clear my mind and just shoot. So, yeah. Any more? Um, defensive, they're known for their offense, of course, but uh, uh, they look lanky and, and, and quick on the movement and everything. Uh, what kind of a challenge was it facing their defense today? Uh, they had a solid defense. Uh, I feel like they, I, I feel like it really wasn't a challenge. They just was, they're challenged, they're, they challenged us by scoring the basketball and uh, getting it up really fast. All right, thank you, Nike. Thank you. Thank you.